Rachel Lindsay was already a successful attorney when she made the decision to turn her life upside down and audition to be a contestant on The Bachelor. Rachel Lindsay's public path to love started on the 21st season of ABC's hit show, The Bachelor, in 2017. She didn't receive the final rose, but her charisma and outspoken demeanor helped land her The Bachelorette later that year. Rachel became the first black lead in the history of the franchise that had faced years of criticism over its lack of diversity. Ultimately, finding love with chiropractor Brian Abasolo, Rachel's post-bachelorette life had its highs and lows. As host of The Bachelor's Happy Hour podcast, she regularly spoke about the racial controversies that plague the franchise. But as a correspondent on Extra, it all came to a head last February in an interview with then-Bachelor host Chris Harrison. Rachel challenged him on the acceptability of contestant Rachel Kirkconnell's attendance at an Old South antebellum-themed party. It's not a good look. Well, it's not a good... Well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? It's because not there's a, a big good difference. look ever. This interview led Chris Harrison to step aside permanently and Bachelor Nation was divided. Rachel Lindsay says she received death threats and took a break from social media, ultimately walking away from one of the biggest reality show franchises on TV. Rachel writes about it all in her new book, Miss Me With That, Hot Takes, Helpful Tidbits, and A Few Hard Truths. She joins us from Los Angeles. Rachel, it's so good to have you on. It is not lost on me. Your dad is a judge, you're a lawyer, and you're following a <laughs> Supreme Court justice <laughs> on our show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Oh, goodness. You know, I've got to ask you, it's been a year now since that moment, since that interview with Chris Harrison. Uh, other than when you're on shows, have you rewatched it? How does it feel a year later? Yeah, I can't believe it's been an entire year almost since that happened. It really seems like it was yesterday. To answer your question, I have not watched it. Um, initially, after it happened, I thought about watching it again. I tried, and I was just overwhelmed with emotion. And I've honestly was traumatized from that whole incident, just how it happened, the way it happened, who it happened with, just the audacity of the entire situation. So no, I have not. Um, I've tried to move on past it. Well, it's hard to move on past it when, of course, and I've seen series of interviews, this is now a part of the story, right? And, and yeah. it is a learning lesson from it. I, I think back to watching it, um, so for you, because you didn't watch it, I watched it, your body language, you were very prosecutorial, and I could tell, and I, and I watched it as someone who can lean in on interviews in a tough way sometimes. I saw it coming before Chris Harrison saw it coming. That said, <laughs> uh, was it a gut instinct? Because this show is about gut. Or did you go in with pre-prepared notes for that line of question that way with him? So I asked the question because it was the most relevant topic in Bachelor Nation or in the Bachelor franchise at that time. I would have asked anyone who was affiliated with the franchise that question. What I was not prepared for was the response that I got from Chris Harrison. I mean, he's been the host of the show for 19 years. He's media trained. Usually they walk the straight line. They give a politically correct answer and they move on to the next question. He did not do that. He decided to divulge and give his opinion about what he thought about the matter. I was not expecting that. But when the opportunity came about, I had to step up and I had to question him about the things right. that he was saying because I knew so many people were watching and I had the responsibility to say something. And to use the words of Justice Sotomayor, who just was on the last segment, she said, when you have the power to say something, you have to say it. Right. You saw the opening. Your gut told you to take it, and it forever changed that franchise. And it's put you in this very mm -hmm. powerful position. When we come back, more with Rachel, plus a bonus to this interview, the love of her life, Brian, will join us. I'm curious what he thought of that last year, including her getting the death threats. So many more questions. We'll be right back. We're back with former Bachelorette star Rachel Lindsay, and joining us is the man who received the final rose on her season, her husband, Brian Avicello, a.k.a. Dr. Avs. Thank, so are you on your way to work, Brian? As you can see, yes, I'm all ready to go. So right after this interview, I'm uh, heading out. Okay, so that's love. You put your appointments on hold to be here for Rachel. Um, listen, I, I was yes. talking with her reliving that past year, which she 
discusses openly the PTSD and the, the, the hardship and the fear of receiving death threats and, and all of these painful things after that Chris Harrison interview. When you love somebody, you feel what they feel in so many ways. Watching her go through that, what was it like for you, Brian? Yeah, it was really tough as her husband, you know, watching my wife go through that and essentially be disrespected on national television. It was just really tough for me to watch. And all I wanted to do was just be there for her and support her throughout the process. You know, obviously she had to remove herself from social media, but I was there with her every step of the way, um, you know, just talking her through it. You know, obviously she was very upset and emotional after that time. And I just wanted to be her rock at the end of the day and just give her all the support I could. And he was. And he, in what way was he your rock? Yeah, so I think a lot of people see me as hard and opinionated and they don't see behind closed doors. I'm actually a really sensitive person. And so Brian was there with me when I was emotional, mm. when I was trying to seek understanding as to why this would happen, why people were turning on me when I was just on extra doing my job, asking a question, you know, as a correspondent. I couldn't understand why the audience would blame me for someone else's words. And Brian was there supportive. We would talk it out. Um, and really just, I, I, I've said this, I think, before, but I couldn't have got, gotten through that time without Brian there by my side, really just making me believe in myself, not not getting caught up in what people were saying online yeah. and um, on the news. So yeah, he was definitely there for me. You know, it's in your book, Miss Me With That, which I love the title. You know how many times a day I say that to someone? Um, but yeah. <laughs> you write, Rachel, uh, the chapter is called Rachel's Ideal Man, age 18. You say <laughs> an Omega, which for those who don't know is a black Greek fraternity, one of the most historic. So you say Let's... you want an Omega. Then you say someone, yes. so Brian, are you an Omega? No, right? Okay, so then you say, <laughs> you say you want somebody funny. Brian seems to be funny. You say at age yes. 18, black, preferably dark skin. <laughs> I was 18. I did say this. Yeah, it's in the book. So when, like me, people ask you about being in an interracial relationship and not understanding that as black women with black fathers that we love, that in your mind, you assume my husband will be black. And then life takes you in a direction that love has taken you in and transparently myself as well with my husband who's Jewish. But here it is in black and white, no pun intended, that your <laughs> ideal man you saw as black an athlete, a Christian. Have you become more comfortable with talking about the fact that on that list, your husband, he's funny, he looks athletic, and I'm just sure, <laughs> but he's not black, but he's not black. <laughs> there you have it. No, I, I'm so glad you brought this up because throughout the book, you'll see how the list changes yeah. and you'll see me work through certain things where it's, if I was still holding on to that list, I wouldn't be where I am today. I was trying to check boxes on a certain list and I was constantly unhappy and didn't feel fulfilled in my relationships. And the moment I decided to let that go and to really decide, hey, I want someone who I connect with, where we have the same morals and values, where we just vibe with one another. Of course, attracted to. I mean, attract, uh, attractive wasn't on the list, but clearly that that's, that's here as well. Um, once I let go of that and I just really followed my heart, yeah. but also also what made sense, I found Brian and I couldn't be more happy. And I hope that's a lesson that people right. learn, you know, as they're going through, you know, dating and, and trying to find that relationship. Really quickly before I let you amazing people go, I know Brian has to go to work. You've got to sell books. Of the two of you, Rachel, who has the best gut instinct? Whose gut between the I two mean, of you do you go with? I, I got to say me, because I picked him, right? My gut told me from the beginning he got my first rose, and at the end he was the last one standing. I'm taking it. I'm, I'm not even giving him a chance. I'll, I'll give it to her. I'll give it to her. So when they're Thank big you. decisions, where to move, where to go, anything, you go with Rachel's gut. Oh, no, that's a mutual decision. Don't get me wrong. I, I have some input as well. <laughs> Sounds like a new book 
on the way, whose gut to trust? Well, Rachel, I am glad that you trusted your gut and that you have stuck to your guns and you have brought a conversation that was so very necessary. Think, be transparent. I was one of the people who tweeted in support of you and I am still very proud of you. So congratulations on the book and everything you've done. Brian, get to work. Your patients are ready. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Rachel. Thank you so, thank you so much, much for having us. Of course.